But really, I'm here to talk about soz drain. And what I'm going to do is fairly simple, just whistle stop tour, why, why we're doing this, why we're looking at suds, obviously, what we're hoping to do, how we're doing it, and who we're doing it for, and who we'd like help from as well. So uh, I just will start off with why we're bothering with suds. Obviously, this week has all been about too much water, and how do we manage that better? And there's figures around about four, four million properties being at risk or flood risk. And then there's the flip side of that, what do we do with regards to not having enough water? So suds can help manage some of that fl local flood risk and can also help with some of those, those droughts in terms of rainwater harvesting and aquifer recharge. Water quality, the recent uh, consultation on developing a strategy for diffuse pollution came out recognising the contribution that sustainable drainage can make to managing urban runoff. So we need to make sure that we don't just keep on focusing on flooding, but we also look at the, the broader opportunities for improving water quality. Urbanisation, uh, we have uh, an, an affection for crazy paving on conservatories. All of this adds to making our, our land more impenetrable, which increases the potential for urban water runoff and, and pollution. Urban design, this is my neck of the woods. It's a bit of a mugger's paradise, hence the reason I am the size I am now, because no one ever picked on me. But really what we're trying to do is think about what we can do within that area to improve that, both in terms of flood risk and also in terms of general green infrastructure and water quality. So this is Edmonton, North London, and that part of town has been picked up by an environment agency as being a water quality hotspot. So you got 10 to 21 thinking about what they can do to retrofit sustainable drainage and rain gardens in that area to reduce the impact on water quality. And also we've got an awful lot of infrastructure, particularly in London, with our combined sewer overflows issues that are under the ground and, and off-watt and others think that we can no longer keep on putting our infrastructure under the ground. So we need to think about different ways of dealing with the challenges of managing water in our urban environment. And then there's the politics and regulation. We all know about the Flood and Water Management Act and we're waiting to see when that will be implemented in terms of the Schedule 3 for SUDS. Latest uh, outputs from DEFA suggest that's not going to be to 2014, but there's other drivers in terms of planning policy and the local guidance that's coming forward. So loads of reasons why we should be bothering about uh, SUDS. So why should you bother using the SOS drain? We think it's independent, it's run by Syria. We are about trying to manage that collaboration and provide an authoritative and objective view on how to deliver sustainable drainage in all its forms and guises. We like to think we're authoritative, it's not just me talking in a deep voice. We base this on developing consensus amongst a range of practitioners, whether they be from the client and contractors and consultants, but also engaging with uh, the regulators and government. So we are well connected. We like to think we're engaging. We like to think the SOS drain is, more, is engaging more to the point. There's lots of things for you to get your teeth into, lots of resources of which I'll go into a bit more detail a little bit later on. We think all of this helps us to be credible, comprehensive in terms of the information and resources we have, accessible, it's only a click away, Topical, we like to think we follow what's going on. We're responsive, whether it be forums or blogs. It's facilitated by Sirius SUS drain team. It's consolidated, so we've got everything hopefully under one roof. It's trusted. More importantly, most of it's free. So if you want to come to the website, you will be able to get your hands on an awful lot of guidance. Most of it free and quite a lot of free sewer guidance as well. So we'd like you to use that. So what are we doing? We're developing a website, obviously, and we're hoping to have a face-to-face -face engagement with you through these, these type of events. We're also wanting to be an authoritative source of technical support. So if not, please check us on that. Please come through to us, and we will try and make sure we're giving you the best support we can. We want to basically support effective sustainable drainage. So we're doing this really through the coordination and collation, presentation, dissemination and promotion of information delivering SUDS for all. That, that wasn't such a long sentence when we wrote it down. 
Anyway, uh, we'd also like to encourage the implementation of SUDS and overcome the challenges and really positively respond to the legislation and standards so we can start exploiting some of those opportunities. So we want to provide a platform that supports sharing and caring of information and also encourage and monitor new developments within the process and philosophy and products around sustainable drainage. So how are we doing it? That's the website. I hope all of you have at least visited there once. And we're also doing it through events where obviously people are looking fairly uh, concentrated on the event. But this is the type of thing we want to do. So it's a mixture of websites and also interaction. And talking about interaction, can we have a straw poll? How many local authorities have we got here? How many local authority drainage engineers have we got here? How many local authority planners? Okay, that's not a surprise. What about landscape architects? Okay, that's also not a huge surprise. What about general engineers and consultants? Okay, and the rest of you? This is the meeting you should be at, isn't it? <laughs> so, okay, so in terms of what we've got to offer, we've broken down delivering SUDS into using SUDS, and there's a whole host of information there. We've also got information about retrofitting SUDS and drainage exceedance, what to do when the water can't get back into the system, whether it be a pipe or a sud scheme. So there's an awful lot of information behind that, but that's in, in essence what the content we got on offer. The resources, I won't run through this, but we've got an awful lot of information, and what we've tried to do is provide an opportunity to signpost the guidance, point you in the right direction for policy, and more importantly, the evidence and performance. But what we'd also like from you is information as to where some of this detail is that we haven't yet captured. We don't think we've got it all. We'd like to think we've got most of it, but we're not sure if we've got it all. So please let us know if there's other things that we're missing. And for the future, we talked about this today, we're going to keep the focus on retrofitting, working with communities, but we also want to deal with some of these challenges that as practitioners and regulators and as local authorities we're trying to deal with about issues about affordability. So we're not going to shy away from those issues, but if there are things that you want us to explore, please do let us know. And this is why we're doing it, because we think SUDs are a good idea, and this is really coming out from some of the community work that I've been shadowing with, with Lambeth and Owen Davis. So it, it's, I think it's, we're at the cusp of something quite interesting, where third sector organisations are working with local authorities to deliver SUDs. And this wasn't one of the SUDS team, this was a resident, so that's, that's even better. So who? We couldn't do it without our, our partners and supporters, so thanks for them. But we're also doing it for these guys, the community, both in terms of the people that live in our built environment, but also those that work there. So we're trying to capture all those different disciplines that are involved. So, but we do need your help. We have a forum. We have 90-odd people there. We'd really like you to get involved in that. I won't do a show of hands to shame you all into subscribing, but if you haven't subscribed, please visit the website. And within the next couple of weeks, we'll have some easy, uh, noddy guidance about how to use the forum, but it is fairly straightforward. Blogs, these are an opportunity for thought leadership, so if you've got anything you think is of relevance to the industry, uh, comment. If you think someone has put something on there which you want to add to or would like to start discussion about, again, please add a comment on there. We have 35 case studies. We're always looking for more. Our hope is that we talk about them in terms of good practice. Uh, so we'd like to some of the traditional principles around sustainable drainage to be promoted as we go forward. So again, if you have any case studies, we'd love to have those. Images, we have a uh, website of 20 albums well, over 100 images that you're able to use as long as you're, you kindly uh, acknowledge where they come from, but they're there for you to use. And then we have a newsletter, which we'd encourage you to sign up to within our, within our website. So we really do need your help. It's, we're doing it because we want industry to move forward, but unable to do that, we need your feedback and, and constant, uh, constant interaction. So this is me in terms of website an email, and also that's my Twitter uh, identi identity. So it's such you like. So please do get in touch in whatever way you want to. And I hope you enjoy today and can stick around for a few drinks and nibbles as well.